I'm going to start off with the news that the Las Vegas Raiders star wide receiver Devontae Adams has officially requested a trade. Now he's not demanding one. The exact language that was used was that he prefers to be traded. And this is a situation that's sort of been developing over the course of, you can even go back to the beginning of preseason when there was that situation where Antonio Pierce said that everybody has to play in these preseason games. Devontae Adams said, I'm not playing in those games, so maybe a little bit of a disconnect there. Then, you know, moving on through the year here, we have seen some situations. You look at Antonio Pierce talking about those comments that he made after their week three loss about players making business decisions, and now that he and the Raiders, they have to make business decisions of their own. Maybe, coincidentally, maybe not. We see a few days later, Devontae Adams dealing with a hamstring injury that pops up in practice, and he chooses to sit out of this game. Now, maybe he medically wasn't cleared to play, but some of the reports as well are that this is a this was an injury that he probably could have played in this game against the Browns with. He decided to, again, I, I just based off of what the reports have heard, that he, it was sort of on his merit a little bit to decide to not play in this game. They wouldn't have restricted him. <clears throat> and then, additionally, there was this very strange report that broke out the past couple days about how Antonio Pierce liked an Instagram post from, I believe it was Sports Illustrated, which talked about the idea <clears throat> of the Raiders, you know, potentially shopping Devontae Adams. And at first, when all the headlines came out about it, it was that Antonio Pierce was trolling because it has been a very much ongoing conversation about the future of Devontae Adams with the Raiders and whether or not they would be they would be trading him. This stems back to last season and even trickled into the off season as well. Specifically, the Sports Illustrated post was a uh, tweet saying, don't be surprised if Devontae Adams has already played his last snap with the Raiders. This was, you know, based off of a report. And Antonio Pierce liking this post is a very strange move, especially on top of it, you look at the fact that Adams then went on the Kay Adams show, I believe it's called Up and Adams, and when she asked Devante about this situation, he said that he hadn't heard from Antonio Pierce since that incident, so he doesn't really know what's going on, which I would like to add that that is a crazy move from Antonio Pierce in the first place. He called it a mistake, I believe, but in terms of he accidentally did it, either way, this is just such, and I get it, social media, as Devontae himself put it, can be a monster, and things tend to sort of spiral out of hand from there, but a ridiculous move from an NFL head coach to use social media and be entertaining or interacting at all with a post like that. So very interesting there. And then sort of stemming from that as well, we got the official news that Adams has requested a trade. So again, that's just sort of the backstory behind all of this. What does it mean though, going forward here? It means that it's very much in the realm of possibility that Adams could get moved. I do think that it is a little bit more difficult than that considering the fact that Adams has a, you know, very lucrative contract with the Raiders at this point where he's currently on the books for this season. I think it's $17 million, but it's going to make the jump up to 30 over $35 million in base salary in the next couple years. According to SpotRack, there is an out of Devontae's contract after this season, but I can't imagine the Raiders are going to just let him walk for nothing. That that would be very much counterintuitive for their franchise, that the value for Adams, who statistically has been down in these past couple years, I think it's more a product of the lackluster offense that the Raiders have been playing with, but 
you know, his numbers are down. He is over 30 years old and he's going to be making a ton of money. I mentioned $35 million in terms of the base salary, but in terms of overall cap hit, it's going to be $44.1 million. So even that much more expensive, which does inherently limit some of the other options as well as to where he could go. Now, I want to address first off the fact that the Kansas City Chiefs are one of these teams that especially after losing Rasheed Rice, although you know we don't have all the final details, details there, the fact that we haven't heard that it's a torn ACL makes me think that it probably isn't, that that would be testing that they would probably know initially, so maybe it's not quite as bad there, but Chiefs are probably going to be in the market for a wide receiver come the trade deadline, which still isn't until November, so there's some time there, and they'll have more answers on Rice, of course, by that point, but I also just don't think that it's a realistic possibility given the fact that the Raiders aren't going to sell low on a star wide receiver and send him to a division rival. Now, if the Chiefs are, you know, one of the teams that's calling and willing to spend big on them, I don't know if sort of consensus across the league is that his value is a first round pick at this point. Sounds like the Raiders themselves are looking for a second round pick and additional compensation. So if the Chiefs are one of the only teams that are reaching out about a first round pick, it could be something that ends up being in the works, but I just don't think it's realistic to expect the Chiefs to make a move like this considering A, the financial obligations to this deal, the you know, if it's one thing for the Raiders to trade him to the Chiefs, but I could definitely see the Raiders sort of keep taking on some of that salary themselves in order to get more value. They're not going to do the Chiefs any favor in a situation like this. So I b- personally believe that this is a theory that should just be ruled out altogether. Now, the other team that is obviously very heavily sort of linked to Devontae Adams at this point is the New York Jets, which I think is a whole lot more realistic. The Jets, obviously, with Aaron Rodgers, who is Devontae's old running mate, that is very much in play in my eyes. This is a situation where the Jets know that this is sort of make or break time for Robert Sala, for Aaron Rodgers, for GM Joe Douglas as well, that they... It's basically championship or bust, and I think that the majority of NFL fans wouldn't call the Jets, you know, favorites to win the Super Bowl. That they're in contention, I think, is at least for playoffs, they're in contention. I still think that they're going to be walking a little bit of a thin line there, that I, coming into this season, had them as an 8-win team to a 9-win team, so... They're going to be, you know, somewhere hovering in the middle there, but adding Devontae Adams would provide a very much needed spark to this. Still hasn't looked great up to this point. And while, you know, there are steps that Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers are taking to get on the same page, it's at some point, you know, patience is going to run out and the Jets could get somebody in Devontae Adams where Feels like, you know, maybe there's a little bit of rust to shake off. All things considered, though, Adams and Rodgers were all pros, and Rodgers was an MVP when they were together. So I don't think that this is a situation that would take all too much time. I think it's a little bit of a no-brainer for the Jets, to be honest, that they should absolutely be, you know, vying for this deal. We'll see how it works again given the fact that especially, you talk about make or break for everybody, Joe Douglas is sort of one of the guys that are under the most pressure. He doesn't get talked about the same because general managers don't fetch the same spotlight, but he knows if this season goes awry for them, he's going to be fired. He's the one who can make the move to actually send the picks, whatever it takes, in compensation for Devontae Adams. If it's a deal that a lot of people don't feel like are going to age well, Douglas knows that he might not have to sort of be responsible for those in a couple years if he isn't here. So 
I think the Jets are easily the front runner in this deal. Some other teams that are at least worth mentioning here, the New Orleans Saints have supposedly been interested in this. Another situation where, yes, in Las Vegas, you know, the Derek Carr and Devontae Adams relationship didn't go quite as smoothly as anticipated, obviously, once college teammates that were excellent together. Then, on the, on the Raiders last year, wasn't the same story, but... I do feel like this is a much better surrounding situation for New Orleans where dealing with some injuries on the offensive line right now, but it is an improved offensive line. You have other weapons in Alvin Kamara and in Chris Olave that that would be, you know, a huge spark to the Saints who they end up losing this past week. We're going to be diving more into that loss later when we get into the panic meter, but I think the Saints are very much still alive in this season, despite the division loss there. That could potentially come up to hurt them come the end of the year. But if you add Devontae Adams into that offense, I think the defense is very talented, and I think that that could do a ton for the momentum moving forwards for New Orleans. So something to take into consideration there. You also have another situation this time in the AFC in the Buffalo Bills, who are off to a solid start to the year. Was a great start up until getting stomped this past weekend against the Ravens. And among the concerns with the defense, they are clearly not, you know, one as much as they've been punching above their weight class, and they did for the first three weeks of the season with all of the injuries they're sustaining currently and missing both of their linebackers. Yes, running the ball is sort of the biggest red flags with that Buffalo team. That being said, baked into that is a sort of flying under the radar as well is the fact that when things sort of got and tightened up, when the run game wasn't flying for them, Josh Allen really didn't have anybody to go to to go and make plays. Now he hit that deep shot to Khalil Shakir, so it's not like they are untalented from a weapon standpoint. They're very clearly lacking a number one, though, and Devontae Adams would be so much fun to watch play football alongside uh, Josh Allen that that would be a a little bit of a dream scenario here just in terms of fun, high-flying football. Some other teams, I suppose, I can throw out there as well, and there's a million of them that we can go down the line. The Cowboys are a team that have been rumored, but it sounds like they aren't interested it would do you make somewhat it would make some sense i still feel like they have bigger needs sort of in the run game on the offensive line that adams would make them a better team but are they willing to give up future assets for it i'm not sure about that you look at the steelers as well which would be pretty interesting itself you know mike tomlin devonte adams feels like that would be sort of you know a little bit of a natural fit there there's less stability at the quarterback position for for sure between Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. I don't know how on board necessarily Devontae Adams could get behind that, but it's definitely a possibility. I've also seen the 49ers thrown there out there as well for an Ayuk Adams deal. That could be a very interesting one to sort of see if it's a little bit of a dark horse situation there that works out. But you know, I don't think that we're going to get answers on this anytime soon. My gut reaction would be that we haven't seen the last of Devontae Adams in a Raiders jersey, that this is going to take some time. Adams, I don't know, maybe he sort of milks this hamstring injury further, but all things considered, I don't think he's going to just flat out hold out in this situation. His contract hit, at least for this year, is going to decrease as the you know, as the weeks go on, so it's going to be a little bit easier for opposing teams to make a move. I do think that he gets traded by the end of the season. I don't think it's going to happen immediately here and that they're going to him and the Raiders at least come to some sort of a middle ground, at least for the time being. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section as we are going to come back around to the NFL in this show. But before we do so, we do have to touch on the MLB playoffs that started yesterday. We're going to be breaking down all four games there, starting with the American League. Going to talk about the Astros losing to the Detroit Tigers. 
Tigers in a potential upset series. And then also the Kansas City Royals also upsetting the Baltimore Orioles in Game 1 of that series. Some incredible pitching across the American League yesterday that we're going to be diving into. But before we do so, we do have to take a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 